One way to describe where we are is to say we're on Lake Conlon in Osceola County in Central Florida. But the better way is to say we're back at Lake X. Mercury's private testing ground. And if you're here, you want to go fast. Now that Mercury Marine is officially back, Mercury Racing, the crazy cousin with all the cool toys, has powered its way in and can be found dialing in their boats and motors on the lake. And in a moment of, this seemed like a good idea at the time, I accepted the offer to get behind the wheel. And Tim, our throttle man from racing, pushed the two 300Rs and got us up to 103 miles per hour. That's 166 kilometers per hour, the fastest I've ever driven anything on the water. And even though he didn't panic, the pucker factor was high when we hit a few waves that rocked the boat at speed. Though it actually feels more aircraft than watercraft at high speeds. Even Sarah, our awesome story producer, got behind the wheel and cracked triple digits. Which left me to be a passenger in the back seat for important work, like 100 mile an hour selfies. But high speed hijinks aren't why we're here. Later that night, we were at an exclusive dinner reception where Mercury said they were going to introduce yet another new motor. Without further ado, the president of Mercury Marine, John Pfeiffer. The all new 400 horsepower Verado, to underline the word Verado, outboard engine. The next day, we got out to see them on the water. So other than removing the word racing from the cowling, what's the difference? Well, in short, this gives you everything you expect about a Verado, from the color options to the smooth and quiet performance. There's an impressive power to weight ratio. These actually weigh the same as the 350 Verado, 668 pounds. It's a 2.6 liter inline six with dual overhead cam and 24 valves and uses a 5.44 inch 1.75 heavy duty gear case and has four color options and three shaft lengths, 20, 25, and 30 inch. But the most important number to most people is the price, and the MSRP is $34,135 US. But enough jibber jabbering about specs and horsepower, let's see how it runs. It's basically the opposite of me. It's nice and quiet and performs as expected. And man, is it powerful. A single 400 got this 27-foot-long pontoon whipping around at 50 miles an hour like it was nothing. And when you have a multi-engine setup, watch out. In the last half decade, outboards have gone through a massive resurgence, and you're seeing them on more and bigger boats every year. Mercury's president says that's not stopping anytime soon. Well, we know where the industry is going. Average horsepower continues to go up. Outboard technology continues to get more and more refined. We're making the engines sound and vibration better and better and better. So we'll continue to innovate on the upper end. That's where certainly a lot of consumers really want to see us continue to innovate. The other big outboard news from Mercury for 2019 is actually some small news. It's this, the five horsepower propane. When I say propane, I mean, yes, the exact same that you have in your barbecue. So you could use this on your grill, come back, plug it in. It'd be perfect for camps. This actually made its world debut at the Toronto International Boat Show in January. So I've been eager to test it out. Ooh. Now we're cooking with gas. This will be a hit with campers and sailors, or even as a little cottage kicker on a boat for your kids. You know, now that I think about it, when we were here last year, there was an alligator in this little pond. I guess we could catch him, hook up the grill, and have some gator bites. Gator harvesting aside, that barbecue idea was actually a major motivator behind this. You know, there's a big opportunity to give people that use a five horsepower outboard a much more convenient, easily usable fuel system than conventional gasoline. And the silver lining is it's more environmentally friendly as well since propane doesn't have the same evaporative emissions. And if you're at the campsite and there's a barbecue emergency, you just bring your boat back and hook up the fuel tank. Later in the show, we'll take a look at the technological innovations that Mercury is working on. 
Eight decades ago, on January 22nd, Carl Kiekafer purchased a bankrupt engine plant in Cedarburg, Wisconsin. And at the 1940 New York Motorboat Show, the Thor engines, model numbers K1 through K5, were introduced. And one of them was even brought to this year's Toronto International Boat Show to show where they've come from. And what a long, long way from Thor that is. So in 1939, Carl Kiekafer started making marine motors. 80 years later, they're still doing that, but there's a lot more in the Mercury family now, including the power products acquisition that happened a couple months ago. So I'm here with Daniel Clarkson. How are you? Awesome, Steven. We're not talking about the motors right now. We're talking about basically everything else. That's right, because people don't go engineering, they go boating. So what That's we've true. been able to That's do true. is uh, bring all of those technologies together to make that a much more seamless and user-friendly experience for everybody. In August of 2018, Brunswick, which owns Mercury, acquired power products. And it means you have things like this, wireless fobs that have proximity sensors. So you could have one for your kids that limits the RPM. It could be programmed that when you walk up, the lights come on, or it'll only start when you're nearby for man overboard warnings. It's basically taking ideas from the auto world that can work in the boating world too. And also coming up with unique to the water features as well, like a warning if the swim ladder is left down, or a light that indicates if the props are spinning to warn swimmers to stay back. So we put one of the fobs in here. This will be Bob the fob. And uh, we have this really high tech way to test whether or not this works. But we're all busy, no one notices Bob's gone. Oh my goodness, kills the engine. Alarm's going off. The SOS flashing on the anchor light. Are you okay? Don't you leave me, Bob. <laughs> it's something to joke about on a small lake on a calm day with lots of people around. But if you're doing some blue water fishing or taking your boat through some big seas, you might not see someone fall overboard. And if they do, they could be hard to find. So the fact that this gives you a bearing to find them, along with alerts you that someone's overboard, is amazing. So all of this is well and good, but what's next? So this isn't something that's available on the market yet. It's more of a demonstration of what they're working on and what can come, and it's autonomous docking. So check this out. I'm gonna not dock a boat. Huh? Look, ma, no hands. So now it holds you here when you tie up. Wow. When it's engaged, it's basically built an invisible bumper all the way around your boat. So no matter what you do with the joystick, it won't let you get close to anything it's sensed. So it's kind of like having a giant air fender all the way around. A joint project with Mercury Marine, Ray Marine, and this test boat from Boston Whaler, it uses the joystick piloting to maneuver the boat around the map of obstacles it's built. So it works and it's really cool, but how does it work? Apparently it's not witchcraft, it's engineering. And a lot of big words. These cameras aren't just normal cameras, they're stereo vision cameras, so there's two. Like your eyes, you can judge the distance of things. There's five of these cameras all around the boat. Two at the bow, one above my head, and two midship. And it's constantly judging what's around us to make a map. And we'll be able to show you. Right here, it's sensing this big concrete wall, which can be really daunting. Oh no, how do I get up here and, and tie up to it? I'm nervous, I might be by myself. Well, you push this button, and it'll do the rest. It'll slowly bring me up to the wall, and then hold me there while I tie up. Now, this isn't commercially available yet, but this is the kind of thing that's happening. There's self-driving cars, and soon we're gonna have self-docking boats. How cool is that? So after seeing the perfectly bookended outboard reveals of the highest and lowest horsepower, our adventures with Bob the Fob, and seeing what the future holds, I'd say we've had our fill of Lake X for another year. And once the waves settle, the intense Mercury Media mayhem returns Lake X to the peaceful and serene Lake Conlon. At least, that is until the racing boys finish their coffee. <laughs>